Hey everyone, I'm Paul, and today I'll show you how to replace the stator in your 150cc GY6 engine Chinese scooter. This scooter was a bit of a disaster and a ton of things were broken, and I have an hour and a half long video about how I fixed everything on this scooter. It had a lot of trouble with the ignition system. It didn't have spark, and I tried replacing the spark plug, the ignition coil, and the CDI, and it still wouldn't run. Then I replaced the stator, and it ran, but the charging system didn't work. What a mess. This is the story of what happened and how I finally got it to work. I have the spark plug touching the metal valve cover and I'm not getting a spark when I crank the engine. Ignition components on a Chinese scooter are cheap. It's easier to swap the components than looking at wiring diagrams and testing voltages. If you work on Chinese scooters a lot, I recommend keeping these parts in stock in your garage. I swapped the spark plug, ignition coil, and CDI on my scooter, and it still won't start. The only part left is the stator. The stator, also known as the magneto, is located behind the fan cover. Remove the four bolts holding the plastic fan. I'm using the rolling wrench CVT holder tool to hold the flywheel and removing the nut. Next, use the flywheel puller tool. I also got this from rolling wrench. This puller tool simply pushes the flywheel away from the crank. Go to rollingwrenchdenver.com to pick up the CVT holding tool and the flywheel puller. They're not very expensive and they'll make your life a lot easier. The stator consists of this big round part with eight coils of wire and a pickup coil. Remove the bolts and pull it out. This is the charging connector and the other two wires are for the ignition system and go to the CDI. This is what the stator, or magneto, looks like. Mine has eight coils. Seven of them are for charging the battery, and the black one provides 12 volts AC to power the CDI. It's wrapped up to protect the wires because they are much thinner than on the other coils. Some scooters will have only six coils, and you can upgrade to an 11 coil stator for more power so you can run extra lights on your scooter. Do a Google image search for GY6 Chinese scooter wiring diagram and you'll find something like this. It's pretty good, but not 100% accurate, so I made my own diagram. Let's start with the components. On the left side, we have the coil and spark plug. CDI stands for Capacitor Discharge Ignition. This is the electronic unit that controls the spark and tells the coil when to fire. The round thing is the stator, or magneto. In the upper right corner is the voltage regulator. The seven charging coils are not grounded. Instead, the ends go to the yellow and white wires. These wires carry alternating current to the voltage regulator. The regulator contains a rectifier that converts AC into DC. The voltage changes with engine RPM, so the regulator adjusts it down to around 13.5 volts to charge the battery. The charging system works fine on my scooter, so let's look at the ignition system diagram instead. The one coil that's different generates around 12 volts AC to power the CDI. This power goes through a red wire with a black stripe. The inductive pickup that sits outside the flywheel has a blue and white wire. This sends a signal to the CDI that tells it when to fire the spark plug. The CDI gets its ground through the green wire. The green wire goes to the stator, and the stator is grounded because it's bolted to the engine. The yellow and black wire sends power from the CDI to the ignition coil. The flywheel has a bunch of magnets in it. As the magnets pass the coils, electricity is induced into the wires. The metal bump on the outside of the flywheel passes the pickup and tells the CDI when to fire the spark plug. Set the multimeter to ohms to read resistance. My leads aren't perfect and have 0.2 ohms of resistance. I need to subtract that number from any measurements I take. Let's start by measuring the resistance of the pickup. I'm getting 150 ohms. I don't know if that's good, so I'll compare it to this brand new 11 coil high performance stator I bought from Rolling Wrench. More charging coils means this stator can generate more current. The pickup on this one measures 142 ohms. Here's what I just did on the diagram. I connected the red lead of the ohm meter to the blue and white wire and the black lead to the ground on the pickup. This will measure the resistance across the pickup. The numbers are similar to the new part, so I think the pickup is okay. Now I'm measuring the coil with the red and black wire. On the new stator, I'm getting 372 ohms. 
When I tried to measure the resistance on the old stator, it jumps around a lot and the lowest I got was 4.5 mega ohms. That's 4,500,000 ohms. There's not much of a connection there. It's obviously way off compared to 372 on the good part. My scooter won't run because the coil isn't powering the CDI. I paid $140 for the 11 pole stator upgrade kit from RollingWrenchDenver.com. I already don't like this scooter, so I'm not wasting my nice parts on it. I found this basic Chinese scooter stator in my garage. I faintly recall there being something wrong with it, but I'm not sure what. Let's check it out. The resistance across the pickup coil measures 137 ohms. The pickups on all three stators are measuring close to the same resistance, so I think that part is good on all of them. Now let's check the red and black wire to ground. The coil that powers the CDI has a resistance of 468 ohms. That's a little higher than the nice new stator, but still pretty close. Based on my measurements, the scooter should run with this stator. I want to check the resistance of the charging coils. The seven coils that charge the battery are connected to the yellow and white wires. I tested the resistance of the stator I pulled out of the scooter and the questionable stator I found in my garage. The stator from my scooter was charging the battery and measures 0.3 ohms. Subtract 0.2 ohms for the leads and we have 0.1 ohms in the old stator and 0.8 ohms in the parts bin stator. The parts bin stator has eight times as much resistance. I bet it won't work. I didn't subtract 0.2 from the measurements earlier because minus 0.2 ohms won't make a significant difference when you're measuring 300 ohms. Okay, let's install my parts bin stator and see what happens. My theory is it should at least make the scooter run. I'm using my electric impact driver to save some time, but the final tightening should always be done by hand. The small M6 bolts should be torqued to 7.3 foot pounds or 10 newton meters. Install the flywheel, washer, and nut. Hold the flywheel with the rolling wrench CVT tool and torque the nut to 36 foot pounds. My replacement stator had the smaller green connector, so I swapped it for the bigger white one so it will plug in. The scooter runs! Now let's test the charging system. The battery voltage started a bit high because I had it on a charger. When I rev it up, the voltage actually gets a bit lower and stays around 12.6 volts. It should be 13.5 volts. This new stator is not charging the battery. That's fun. I swapped one problem for another. I still need to fix the charging system, so I ordered this new stator on Amazon for $16. It's an 8-pole stator and has the same connector as original. I hope it works. With the new stator installed, my scooter runs. That's good. Let's take a look at the battery voltage. 13.6 volts, goes up to 14. My scooter is finally fixed. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. Of course it's not fixed. Those brand new headlight bulbs I just bought burned out. If you look at them closely, both high and low beam filaments are broken. These bulbs lasted less than half an hour. What the hell? I hopped on Amazon and ordered these LED headlights for my scooter. $13 for two of them. What a deal! Now I'm installing the new light bulbs. This one is really loose. The light socket broke again and the contacts don't touch the bulb. I'll have to bend them in toward the bulb and make sure they're touching. This extreme low quality is what eats your time when fixing Chinese scooters. Simple things can take 20 times longer than they should. Okay, let's gently shove these lights back in and hope they don't break immediately. Also, these LED bulbs require 12 volts DC. Most Chinese scooters send alternating current to the headlights. I have to rewire them. I have the negative lead of my voltmeter touching the green wire on the headlight connector. The black wire gets 12 volts DC when the key is on. This is power for the little running lights. I'm touching the white wire with the engine running and it's not DC. Here I have 12 volts AC. When I switch to high beam, the white wire turns off and I get 12 volts AC on the blue wire instead. Up here, the yellow wire carries AC power from the stator to the headlight switch. It turns off when the engine stops. The black wire right next to it gets DC power when the key is on. Use a pick to release the clip and pull the black terminal out of the connector. Cut the yellow wire and strip the end. I connected the end of the yellow wire and soldered it to the black terminal. 
Now the headlight switch will share the 12 volt DC power with the horn, and the AC wire is left here, not connected to anything. With the key on, both terminals now have 12 volts DC power. Plug in the headlight connector. At the headlight connector, I now have 12 volts DC on the white wire. Switch to high beam, and the 12 volts moves to the blue wire. Switch to low beam, and the 12 volts moves back to the white wire. Let's test the headlights. Now that they're wired for DC, they turn on with the key, and the engine doesn't need to be running. The headlights take a lot of power. Actually, they don't, but the charging system on these scooters is very weak, so every amp matters. You must have every bulb working to test the charging system voltage. I'm getting less than 12.6 volts, so this battery will die. I tried swapping the voltage regulator, but that didn't change anything. Maybe I can save some electricity. I don't really need these running lamps up front, so I'll just take the bulbs out. The speedometer has two incandescent bulbs. I replaced them with my running light LEDs and saved a tenth of an amp. The brake light uses a lot of electricity. Switching this bulb to LED saved me 1.6 amps. Now with the engine revved up, I'm getting 12.7 volts. That's still low, but it's higher than 12.6, so technically it's charging the battery. Just barely. The battery itself is a bit low at the moment, so it could be dragging the voltage down. Let's connect the battery charger and test the voltage again later. I test rode the scooter and now I'm getting 13 volts from the charging system. That's good enough. This scooter finally works! I have another video with more information about the charging system in my Chinese scooter playlist, so be sure to check that out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.